Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Hopefully you guys are having a good day and hope you guys have fully recovered from your epic New Year's party. Uh, today, let's go ahead and begin episode three of our Twitter app tutorial series. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to properly lay out these subviews inside of our user cells. Uh, we're gonna do it so that we can easily support multiple device sizes. But before we go into the code for today's video, I wanna show you guys a quick diagram as to uh, the process in which we're going to build out the rest of today's or the Twitter app. All right, inside of Photoshop, hopefully you guys can see this okay. We have this thing called a guide to completion. And these are necessary steps to build out the rest of the app here. If I scroll all the way to the right, this is the final state of the application. It looks like this right here. If I tab over, it pretty much looks like the same screen that we've seen so far. And to build out this state, you really need to break down um, this application into a couple of very easy to build steps. And if we scroll all the way to the left here, what we have on the left side is the current application right now. And in this video, I want to show you guys how to get the design to match up with what you see in the middle of the screen here. And then we will modify this design to uh, sort of match up with the design that we have for the Twitter application. Now the red box right here is the profile image view. The green is the name for our Twitter user. Purple is the Twitter user name. And the yellow is sort of the bi bio text is what I'm gonna call it. The teal or the cyan on the right side is just the follow button. So pretty simple design. And once we are able to lay out our subviews correctly, we can get our uh, true design uh, to show up very easily. Now, having said that, let's go ahead and proceed with the Xcode editor. And I'm gonna run the application just to make sure the application runs correctly. So home data source controller is currently responsible for laying out all of the header cells and subviews that you see right now. If you missed episode two of the Twitter series, go ahead and find the link down below and Get, get kind of caught up before you proceed with this episode here. And uh, let's see, how do we want to start off today? I'm gonna drag in a kind of an image right here, sort of as my reference as to what we want to do for today's video. So first I'm going to go into cell right here. All of the cells that you see inside of the app right now is being rendered out by this class called user cell. And to start off today, I'm going to uh, put this red box for the profile image view inside of this user cell very easily by first creating the view. So let profile, let's see, profile image view, v of type UI image view. And inside of this block right here, I'm going to create this UI image view, setting the background color to red, just to make things very visibly uh, recognizable and return this UI image view right there. And now we have our profile image view. To get it inside of each one of these rows like this little mock right there, we need to first add it as a sub view of the cell's view hierarchy. And that's going to kind of get it into the view, but we have not laid it out yet, so it's not going to show up inside of the cell. So let's now lay out the profile image view. The profile image view, let's just see this right here. I'm going to use this convenience method is what we call it, called anchor. And uh, let me just type this out first and then I'll explain to you what's kind of going on. So the anchor, I'm going to use a self.top anchor. And then for the left, I'll use self.left anchor. And I'm going to clamp the bottom to nothing, clamp the right to nothing. And for the top constant, I'm going to use a 12, 12 for top and left, bottom is zero, right is zero width is 50 and height is 50. So I'm gonna run this application now, and I think we're going to get some clipping of this cell because it's not tall enough. So we have some clipping here. So let me just give this a little bit more height by going back to home data source controller right here. That's a size for item, returning CG size of width, uh, view frame width, is that okay? and 150. So run this application again. You're gonna get each one of your, your items or cells inside of your collection view to be of height 150 and as wide as the entire view controller. So that's what we get. And let's go back to cells and user cell. 
this anchoring method right here. So what is going on with this anchor? So like I said, you can command click in here, goes into the LBTA UI view anchors extension, and you see a bunch of code. Uh, going back to user cell, the anchoring works like this. Whenever you need to place a view onto the screen, you need to provide it with a couple of different values, uh, pretty much the X, Y, and the width and the height. And the way that the anchor works is you place the, uh, the top clamped to the top of the cell, which is this entire yellow block. And then the left is going to be the left of the cell. And the top and the left constant just provides the padding for the top and the left. Finally, width and height is just 50 and 50. So pretty straightforward right there. If you try to do this without a convenience method, it does take quite a bit of time. So hopefully you guys can learn how to use this to uh, save ourselves all of the effort of all of the typing. So that's how we get the red block into view. Now the reason why user one is showing up down there in the center is because we've clamped the name label that says user one. I guess it's kind of saying that right now. But uh, name label says user one. We need to redefine the anchoring for name label. So if I remove that and run the application again, it's going to remove the name label from the cell's uh, view hierarchy or not, not the hierarchy itself, but it's just not going to be laid out correctly. So I'm going to do something here, a little bit of refactoring. I'm going to add that right there. I like to add all my subviews in the same section of the code. And now I can use name label and try to anchor it onto something inside of our view. So this is pretty easy. If you anchor this to the top of the red block, which is profile, image view dot top anchor and the left of the green will be the right of the red so left will be profile image dot right anchor and the bottom because it's not really attached to any uh, particular bottom I'm going to use nil and for the right I'm just going to extend it all the way to the cells right right there even though that's not what you currently see I'm going to say self dot right anchor and top constant will be zero left let's just use a value of perhaps four bottom will be zero right will be let's just use value of 12 width will be zero and height let's just use a value of 20. so before i can kind of visually see all this i'm going to use a background color of green for the name label and i always do this inside of my initial designs because Without the background colors showing through, it's hard to see exactly where your subviews are landing. So that's what you see. There's a little bit of gap between uh, these two views here. I'm going to increase the gap by changing the left constant of four to eight and also removing the background color of the yellow because I think we're pretty good in terms of seeing where our cells are being laid out. So running the app again, we get uh, the red, the green, and all the padding to match correctly with what the values are being given inside of the anchoring method. So to further complete this layout, I'm going to place the purple inside of our row by creating the username for the purple. Remember our username is, let's see, this is the username right there, the build that app right there. And let's just create, let username of label be of UI label right here. Let's see. I'm just going to go ahead and copy all this to hopefully save you guys a little bit of time. That's his username and execute that block right there, giving us that label. So this, let's just use a value of purple for the background color. And here we go. Let's get this inside of the subview hierarchy with username label like so. And again, if we run this application, it's not going to show up. So let's place this inside of the subview hierarchy by saying username label dot anchor. And uh, let me just get some space down here. Easier for you guys to see. Uh, username label will be anchored to the bottom. Let's see, the purple will be on the bottom of the green. So the green is going to be, let's see, name label dot bottom anchor left anchor will be the exact same as the name labels left anchor. So like name label dot left anchor. The bottom will be nil. Again, it's not really clamped to a particular bottom. 
the right anchor, let's just use uh, the same as the green's right anchor, which will use a name label dot right anchor like so. Top constant will be the padding of this right here. So let's just use a value of eight. Left will be zero, bottom is zero, right will be zero. And the width constant will be zero again. The height is of value 20 because we haven't really specified how tall it needs to be. So the height of 20 will just be a hard-coded constant. So that's what you get when you run the application. Uh, pretty nice. Uh, we'll fix the right side to be clamped to the, the cyan colored block in just a bit. And now I want to lay out the yellow bio text, which is this right here, this bit of bio text. And to do that is also very easy. Instead of using a UI label, I'm going to use a bio text view instead. Let's see, UI text view. And let's just create this text view of UI text view. Text view of background color is dot yellow. Hopefully this is pretty self-explanatory by now. I'm going to execute that entire block, giving us that text view as bio text view. Adding the bio text view of Let's see that into the sub view. And now if we run the app, we don't see any difference because we have yet to anchor it onto anything inside of the sub views. So we get this, this, and how do we place this yellow guy into the row right now? Well, let's just see how we want to do this. Let's bio text view anchor. And the top of this is on the bottom of the purple. So let's just use username.bottom anchor. The left will be user name dot, let's see, left anchor. Bottom will be the cells bottom anchor, which is just self dot bottom anchor. The right is the cells right anchor right there. Uh, for the top, it's not really being spaced out at all. So let's just use a value of zero, left zero, bottom zero, right zero. And for the width, we already know the width because it's clamped from the left to the right. So let's just use a value of zero, the height, we know it's from the bottom of the purple to the bottom of the entire cell, so height is zero. So that's how you kind of use this anchoring system. If I run the app now, hopefully we'll see some bit of yellow showing up underneath the green and the purple. So let's see, where are we? So here we go. We get the yellow nicely placed uh, underneath the yellow and the purple label, or the green and the purple label rather. And now we're ready to include the teal. Is that teal? I think that's cyan inside of our cell subviews. So how do we do that? Remember this uh, cyan color thing is actually this uh, follow button. So let's just call it let follow button. Be of type UI button right there. Uh, let button, let's just do this very quickly here. Button dot background color equals dot cyan. Return this button guy here and uh, execute this block to give us that button. And now let's just add subview of follow button inside of all of the subviews. How do we want to anchor this? Well, let's just do this here. Uh, follow button dot anchor. Uh, it's going to be anchored on the top of the cell. So let's just use uh, top anchor. Uh, and then the left will be nil because it's not really clamped onto anything on the left just yet. And the better way of doing this is to clamp the follow button to the right instead. So the bottom is also nil and the right will be self dot right anchor. And the top constant is the padding that I'm going to provide a value of let's say 12. Left constant is zero because it's, it's not really anchored to anything on the left. Bottom is zero for the same reason. And the right will use a value of 12 to give that spacing right there. The width, I'll just give a value of 120. And the height, let's just use, uh, I think 34 is a good value to use uh, for, I guess, later down the road. So 34, it's going to be a somewhat shorter button. And it looks like that when you run the app. And pretty good stuff. Now that we have the follow button kind of in play right now, we can clamp the uh, the green and the purple onto the left of the follow button. So the way to do that is to very easily go inside of name label and I'm going to change, let's see, the right anchor right here. Instead of anchoring it to the cells right, I'm going to anchor it to 
Let's see, follow buttons, left anchor right there. And I think we should be good to go. So the green is going to be anchored to the, or the green's the right side, it's going to be anchored to the follow button's left side, like that. And earlier, we clamped the user name label's right anchor to match what the name label's right anchor is. That's why everything is just shifting properly and working out just fine. So that's how you would kind of lay out this subview hierarchy inside of each one of your cells. And everything looks kind of okay right now. The spacing probably not all that perfect, but we'll have to deal with that later on when we can kind of modify the, the design just a little bit better. Okay, so now our layout is somewhat complete for the iPhone 7 simulator right here. Let's see what this looks like for the iPhone 7 Plus. I'm gonna run the simulator right here and kind of wait for it to load. I would expect the views to be laid out correctly because the way that we've anchored everything, um, the expandable views are the purple, the green, and the yellow right here. These two views are sort of hard-coded so that they have a hard-coded value in terms of width and height. And okay, let's see, 7 Plus is now up and running. Let's just drag this here. And if I can blow this up a little bit. Okay. So this simulator is the iPhone 7 Plus, and everything is being laid out very nicely, and we didn't have to go through a lot of different changes because the anchoring system just kind of handles everything for us. Now, what's kind of interesting as well is if we fire up the iPhone 5S, let's see what the layout looks like for us. Remember the iPhone 5s are a lot uh, thinner in terms of the width, and it's also a lot shorter in terms of the height of the device as well. All right, and there we go. We have the iPhone 5 rendering the same layout for our rows right here. So everything is being placed correctly, and all of this is done very easily if you use the anchoring system, just like what we did in this video. Okay, so that's going to be it for today's video. Now, the anchoring system I find pretty easy to understand, and it's also pretty straightforward. If you have a convenience anchoring method like this, uh, it's pretty fast to lay out all your subviews so that you can easily modify them later on. All right, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. In the next video, we are going to implement the rest of the design, such as the profile image view and the user name labels. All right, source code for today's video is, uh, you can find that down below in the description. Um, that's going to be it for me today. Uh, keep on coding and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.